This is the uh, stock Fiat 500 uh, 1.4 liter turbo uh, Abarth thermostat housing. So as you can see, uh, we have a thermostat in here. And this thermostat, actually, I've been doing some experimenting. And uh, I've adapted it. You can see how it just pops apart. And you take out the, uh, the valve. I call it a thermal pellet. This is called, a, or some people call it a thermal motor. Uh, I've changed the seat so now it's the same height. And uh, this here, it's it just pops in and out. That's not a big deal. Anyways, um, calibrated this on the on the stove in a pot of boiling water with a kitchen uh, probe type thermometer, and it opens around 162. So a little sooner than the 176 that the stock Fiat one does. But I believe, after watching a YouTube video, that the calibration to change the temperature is based on the amount of indentations. There's a, a sleeve and a piston in here, and the wax expands and pushes this rod up. Uh, you can actually pull it right out if you want. And what ends up happening is, is that coefficient of expansion and where the wax starts to push the rod actually opens the valve. So anyways, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a little experiment with this and see if I can't just modify uh, this valve on its own. I've already tested it. It does open around 176, 178. But let's see if we put a couple more dimples in here. Would it be possible to test it? And maybe it'll open up at 160 degrees Fahrenheit or maybe 165 for those of you that would like the thermostat to open a little sooner. So on we go. This is a shot of the Fiat X19 car engine bay with the uh, Fiat 500 Abarth engine in it. Uh, what you can notice here is, is that it's crammed between two firewalls. We've got a, a rear trunk firewall and we've got the passenger compartment firewall. And the turbocharger is way down here, generates all kinds of heat, and it's not open to the outdoors like the Fiat 500 Abarth engine is where you've got your rad and your grill and you've always got air being forced over it, even if you're in, in stop and go traffic. And that's great because that electric fan still moves some air over it. But in this car, when we're in stop and go traffic, nothing happens other than on the hood, there's some slats. I mean, you can put your finger in here like this and they're, they're mushroomed over to stop the rain from getting in them. If you take a look at the Alpha 4C, it, it looks like they've had some issues because basically what they've done is they made a big hunk of plastic cover like a mushroom, stuck it on top of the engine and left it open all the way around so the air can, can convect. Now the Fiat X19 does have these side scoops here and they let some air in, but you have to be moving. If you're sitting in traffic, nothing's going to happen. So it's not a great way to be. So that's why I'm trying to uh, lower the temperature on the um, stock thermostat and the stock probe uh, for the fans, which, uh, t which turn on the electric fans, and to see if we can just um, give this new home for this engine uh, a little bit of help with a little extra cooling. What we're looking at here is a... Um Fiat 500 Abarth thermostat housing. So when you go to order a uh, thermostat for a Fiat 500 Abarth, this is what you get. Now I picked this one up at Rock Auto in the mail. Uh, they sent it to me for $34 Canadian and it even comes with a temperature sensor. Now when I was looking at replacing that temperature sensor because I thought maybe it was bad on my car, um, it was 200 bucks uh, at CarQuest. So uh, I thought, well, I'm going to live with it. So, you know, just to let you know, uh, Rock Auto had them. Here's here's what the back side looks like. And uh, what I'm going to, what I wanted to do is because in my application, I, I've taken that uh, Abarth engine and put it into a Fiat X19. The problem I'm having is, is that it's it doesn't have airflow over it. So I'd like that engine to run a little bit cooler. So what we found was, is when I went to CarQuest, is this uh, uh, thermal pellet type. A thermostat and it looks very close so I'm going to take it apart and this here just spins out and uh, put that in now here's the part number I right, hope you can see that at CarQuest and this was a five dollar part uh, that was Canadian we're talking and this is this was 35 34 dollars Canadian with with the temperature sensor so can't go wrong with that so a little bit of experimentation we'll see what we get okay so what we did here is this is the thermal pellet with the valve 
from the Fiat. And this is uh, the stock one from uh, CarQuest. A couple of problems. Well, on the good part, both are the same height. Both have the same diameter of, of, of the pellet body. The only problem is, is that is where the valve is. And you can see here that the valve heights are a little bit different. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to, uh, this is the one I want to put in because it's the 160. I'm going to cut this one off and I've got some stainless steel. And what I'm going to do is uh, turn a, another disc on my lathe and form it. And you can see how that's just press fit on there. Uh, I'm going to cut this one off because I don't want to damage it uh, by pressing it. And uh, I'll make one up with a little more offset. You can see how that's like a, like a cone. Whereas the Fiat, it's more flat. But when you drop it into the, um, into the thermostat well, right here, you can see that the, the basic diameter is pretty close. And that may be a solution too, is just to make one that's a little bit, wide, a little bit bigger in diameter and then it should be able to seat. So, we're not done yet. Um, I have clipped it in, um, and, and it fits perfectly. Well, I'll tell you what, I'll do a picture of that. So I just took a moment here, stopped the camera, and clipped that back in. But as you can see, um, it's open. So, all I have to do is change the valve. And that shouldn't be a real problem. I could deform it a bit. That's another solution as well. But, uh, well, I'll have to think a little bit more. After a little bit of thought, what you're looking at right here is a stainless steel. And it's going to be a seat to extend uh, and fill the gap on that uh, new thermal pellet for the 160 degree uh, thermostat. I looked at taking the other one apart and I thought, you know what, I'm going to damage the darn thing. It's easier for me to just do this. I could probably even stake it over here on the uh, on the ridge here, but I've got a TIG welder. I'll probably weld it with a 40 thou tungsten down around 25 amps and just put, oh, half a dozen tack welds all the way around it. And that should be good. Here I've got it uh, set up in the vise and I'm going to put a tack weld in a couple of spots. I always get a little bit nervous when I'm doing something this fine. Um, it's always nice to have one to practice on first and then you know where you are, but well, we're just going to have to take a shot at it and see what happens. Just a shot of the uh, couple of tack welds I've done right here. I'm going to rotate it again and put a few more on there. This is on the back side, not on the seat, so it doesn't matter how bumpy it is, it's going to be just fine. This is how I set up a test to um, See when the thermostat opens. Currently I'm heating up the water, a pot of water on the stove, a uh, kitchen uh, temperature probe, it's usually within a couple of degrees, and then I'm going to put this uh, thermostat in there momentarily and wait till it gets to 160 and keep checking it to see if it opens or not. This is how you tell if the thermostat's open. Look at the column of water inside the hole. See how quickly it falls out and fills back up again? I'll put the tongs on the other side. It fills up almost immediately. It won't look like it's open very much, but that's when you can tell when it's first opening. Um, it's already opened a bit, and right now we're at 169, so um, I noticed it opened at 162. So um, obviously it's working the way it should. What I've done here is I've um, made a little mounting block here just to keep it sitting upright. Uh, drilled a hole through right through the block, then cut it in half. So this gives me something for the uh, to hold this. And I tried using a washer, but the problem is holding it. Maybe if I welded a piece on here and then hit it directly with a hammer, it would have solved the problem. So I just went and got a regular punch. And uh, what you can see now is that I've put a put a dimple all the way around. And that's going to decrease the inside volume a little bit and hopefully now what I'll do is uh, put it in a pot of water and heat it up and we'll see when it opens. It's pretty simple. Now you can see I did some dimples but the other thing I did was I took a pair of pliers and I took a washer and I place it like this and I, I strike it. Um, you have to heat it. Remember that you've got wax in there and the wax has to be a bit soft because you're, you're 
you're displacing the metal case. So I've done a test on it and currently this thermostat was opening at 168 degrees. I've, I've given it a couple of more strikes and I'm going to test it again. I'd like it to be a little bit, um, you know, 165 or so and then I'll have this one for 165. I've got the stock one in the car that's set up for uh, 176 degrees uh, Fahrenheit and then I've got the other one that opens at 160. So I've got a little bit of flexibility here to play with. You can see on the top of this um, thermostat, you can see I filled it with water so we know that the thermostat's closed. I mean a little it's going to drip by, but so I'm going to dunk it in the water right now. And uh, the water's currently at 154. I'm going to warm it up and see when it opens up and I'll give you another shot. Okay, as you can see, the uh, water is going through it. We're at 167 degrees. The thermostat is now open. And um, that's just because we crimped the sides in on it. Uh, just, just to let you know, if you go too far, uh, the only thing you could do is get another thermostat and put a bigger spring on it to counteract the uh, thermal pellet uh, moving. So, anyways, uh, there's a solution with, with a stock Fiat Abarth um, thermostat to make it open at a lower temperature. Just another point if you're going to try to improve the cooling on your Abarth or your Fiat 500 engine. This is again the thermostat uh, block. Uh, you can, you've seen how I've modified it and it now this one opens at 167, 165, somewhere around there. The other issue that you're going to have is, is that this temperature probe, okay, it's a deep well probe, it goes in, that's great, it's a stock probe. This feeds a signal to the ECU which tells you the temperature of the engine but it also controls the fan. So, if you want to get better cooling now and have your fan to come on at, a, at an earlier time or a lower temperature, this isn't gonna do it, but you're gonna have to live with it. So what I did was, is I purchased from, from eBay, this is made by Hayden, if you look up Hayden um, a fan controller temperature switch, this one's a variable one, and the way you can tell is right here, there's a little blue dial on this block and it adjusts from 160 up to 190 degrees. There's instructions, you put this probe in and the probe will, uh, it goes into the rad. So uh, the interesting thing about this is, is that this relay, relay is a dry set of contacts. And now if you're an electrician, you understand what that means. What it means is that no matter what you hook this up to, uh, for instance, on the Fiat X19, the 87, everything is uh, grounded. So, or pardon me, has positive and you need a ground uh, pulse to it. So you could just jumper the relay or you can jumper the existing temperature switch on the Fiat X19. Uh, the Abarth doesn't have a temperature switch. The, the rad fans come in based on the engine temperature, based on this probe. So um, what's the point of feeding, opening up the, temp uh, the thermostat at let's say 160 degrees, but the fan doesn't kick into 180? Uh, and the only way you're going to get around it is by putting in an auxiliary type of uh, temperature probe and this, this kit. It's not a lot of money. It's only it's less than $40. And uh, it, I've got it on my car and it works really well.